Welcome to Collaborative with Spencer Krauss. Hi, welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Elijah Wegman. Elijah is the founder of Base Design, uh, which is uh, one of the best design firms here in Pittsburgh, and also Spruce Pop. They make really cool dog gear, and uh, I am a big fan. You can see it behind Eli right now. Uh, Eli, welcome to the pod. Thanks for having me, man. We've, Thanks for uh, being here, buddy. We've talked about this for a while. So. I don't get to see you enough, so it's good to have any excuse I can find. <laughs> you know, it's fun. Yeah. Still remote. No, it's, I mean, you know, yeah, we, 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 had that, we had that thing a bit ago, that launch, so it's good. But uh, yeah, so like, I don't know, what have you been up to lately with uh, with some of your work shit? Yeah, so I mean, uh, as you mentioned, I founded Base Design. That was in uh, 2016, which it feels, I mean, still that, you know, that, uh, that kind of constant client hunt of a consultancy. Um, you know, it feels like it was just yesterday that I started it, but um, we do industrial, full service kind of industrial design. Uh, and then as part of that, one of the cool things we do is a lot of branding, marketing, um, helping either entrepreneurs or startups with even their, their brand presence, right? So yeah. as we're developing their, their physical product, their technology or whatever component that is, a lot of the time we end up also working on their brand, you know? Did you their, expect to get into that direction when you started base? Back in, you said 2015, right? Uh, when, when I started base, you know, it was, it was out of uh, necessity, you know? Uh, yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> we'd been uh, laid off from four moms when we were there yeah. and uh, very much out of necessity. It was like, all right, here's our skill set. Here's what we know how to do. Um, we had built all that stuff for four moms between me and uh, my wife, Leah, you know. Leah was with you? At, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, so for those that uh, don't know, four moms, I always, this is probably going to sound horrible and I don't know if you want to repeat, but I'd say they make iPhone S baby gear just to describe what they do, but they've got a hip product yeah. to Mamaru, which I'm sure you worked on. That's like their cash cow. Yep. I, um, uh, I was employee number eight there. So I was their first crap. industrial designer. Wow. Um, you know, it was Robin Henry started the company and then Patrick was their head of sales. He's still my best friend and nice. um, a partner in Spruce. That's awesome. So, you know, when it was when it was time to kind of like leave four moms, we all looked at each other. And we were like, "What's a better industry than babies?" We were like, "Oh, dogs!" You know, like we love dogs. We've got two of them. Um, <laughs> like, talk about baby stuff that lives on for longer than that six month period. Right? Oh, like, yeah, the whole lifetime of the animal. That's yeah, that's an interesting and, way to look at it. Single people have dogs, married people have dogs, old Bigger people market. have dogs, young people, right? So, and everybody likes them. It, it feels it feels good to be in an industry where it's just about like an actual like good relationship. It's not yeah. trying to get people into like, hey, buy this thing you don't need. It's well, just, it's, I mean, your products are awesome. I'm not, you know, I mean, I genuinely like Spruce. I feel good sharing your LinkedIn posts. You know, I, I told my parents to buy your stuff because they have a bunch <laughs> of Cavalier Control Spaniels. Yeah, um, yep. I don't know, I'm thinking about getting a dog myself. I'll probably buy a spruce bed for it when I do. Yeah, we'll <laughs> probably hook you up with that. Oh, dude, thank you. You don't have to do that, but I, I mean, I won't say no. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it's it's just a great industry to be in, and it's uh, you know, like I mentioned earlier, like all of everything with base and spruce has kind of grown out of just who Leah and I are and how we work together, anyways. Right. So, like. I'm always the product development side and I'm a nerd for just gear and products. She's um, just phenomenal at graphic design, um, color, uh, you know, like- That explains the branding competence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. So when it was time to start base, it was like, hey, I'm gonna be, you know, knocking on your door a lot whenever we kind of, you know, pull in clients like this. So that just naturally grew and I mean, the business is probably somewhere around the third mark in terms of what we do, right? So when you say the third mark, what do you mean by that? So traditional industrial design, um, 
CAD development, uh, ergonomic studies, uh, you know, like form, uh, that kind of stuff, hardware. Yeah. It's probably about 30% of our clients, 33%. Oh, interesting. Like that. Okay. That's cool. We do a lot of branding and graphics. That's about 30%. And then the remaining is kind of this mix of UI, UX, digital websites, um, even starting into some, um, as bad as it might sound, like digital marketing, social media presence, you know, stuff like that. I would not have pegged you for, for doing that. Well, you can just see the the uh, the train tracks that that puts you on, right? Like, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, clients, you know, like, fuck, we're making a podcast idea, right now. <laughs> you make the idea, you start that idea through you. You gather your tribe, your audience, and then like we were, we found ourselves just like handing them the keys to a new website with new brand and everything, and saying like, good luck, and. It just wasn't, you know, like satisfying. Like we kept finding digital marketing places like falling down and just, I think everybody has horror stories of how many emails you get about, hey, I can up your email sales by this much. Yep. Hey, give me your social and I will do it, you know, and it's like. Oh, I despise those that emails. Work. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a skill set we've been building internally with our team as, as well. That's pretty cool, honestly. I mean, like I like I said, you know, I, I didn't see myself making a podcast like a year ago, but it's honestly I, at this point, it's just fun for me to make these. <laughs> so I, yeah, you got a lot of episodes in the can at this point. I'm thanks. Really well, and, and part of it's like I I haven't missed a week yet since I started, and so it's I don't know. Like, I, I'm a, I'm a fan of in, integrity, even though nobody's asking me to pump these out. Like. There's some, uh, somebody said for like, no, uh, every Sunday at 9 a.m. There's going to be another episode, you know, yeah, like no matter what happens, to, you know, you can stick to that routine. That's how you, that's how you build anything. You know, that's how you get yeah. better at it. So, Thanks. For sure. <laughs> so yeah, it's been fun. And, um, I've learned a lot about digital media and marketing. Obviously I'm, you probably know more than I do. I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but. I mean... it, unfortunately it's a crapshoot. And anybody that tells you that it's a, uh, a formula, I, I think, is you know, it may be a formula in certain narrow areas, but my it, it really I, is what you can hit, you know. Yeah, I, I'm apologize for cutting you off there, um, but I, I get so excited to like you know have these conversations, like oh, let's go to the next thing. But <laughs> gotta gotta work on that. Yeah. My uh, my sister in law is um, I'm gonna get her job wrong, but my understanding of what she does, I should say, is that she's like a uh, like the head of marketing, like a full-time equivalent, but she does it for like three companies at a time. Just mm -hmm. like, I don't know, she's effective with her time. And I really admire it. Like the last time I hung out with, uh, with them, my brother and her, she had like all this product from like, you know, companies she was trying to work with and clients and their competitors, you know? And I mean, she like mostly in the food space is what she works on. So she, you know, yeah. at the time she was going after a certain brand, I'll say, and she, um, so she had their product and competitors product and she was like really making an effort to just like, you know, eat it, breathe it, you know, literally eat it. <laughs> like yeah, understand. yeah to, to break into that. I mean, yeah. and one, the, the amazing thing about any of it, um, is once you develop an expertise in that silo or in that, that market that carries over to almost every brand within that market. Right. And then, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then you look at corollaries, like with Spruce, we are not just the, we only make dog products, but our audience is also an outdoors audience, right? Like Ooh. a camping, hiking. Well, the pictures track. you guys post. Yeah. It's very outdoorsy for sure. Right. So, so when you get that, then you say, Oh wow. We know how to market to this outdoor audience as well. Ooh. But but it, you know what I mean? Like, so, so, that, like, so then base gains competence through osmosis and, and right, adventure yeah, sports yeah. and off-roading yeah. and mountain biking and camping. Exactly. It. Yep. Yep. That's badass. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love stuff like that. And I feel like that's really true in engineering as well. I mean, I remember this is a project from probably going on seven years ago now, but I was asked to work on a, um, actually we were asked, it wasn't just me, it was, it was the team, uh, was asked to work on a, uh, inspection device for going in water and going underwater and looking at, I think it was dissolved oxygen, salinity, which is saltiness, okay. um, temperature 
just um, I think. I mean, fracture just to determine your depth. Uh, but you you correlate that to GPS data on the surface, and you could make a three D model of what a lake was like, like underwater. And you'd find interesting stuff, like there were like these um, temperature phenomena where there'd be like an underwater wave of just heat, you know, yeah. and, and stuff like that. Um, and so in order to, to wind the cable for the device, uh, we ended up looking at, um, I think it was just fishing. Like we looked at how fishing rods worked. And I mean, there's like a little thing that goes back and forth. Yep. We called that the Traverse Winder, and our I don't know what the what the heck those guys call it. And then I don't know, it's, it was just really interesting. Like that's how we got that, so the cable wouldn't tangle. So it's kind of fun. It's I mean, it's, then, the one of the real secrets there, I think, Spencer, is that you know, like, is not nearly as sexy as these big product ideas or entrepreneurs coming up with like whatever idea. Like, it's the people that look at one industry and take that technology and apply it to a different industry, you know, or yeah, like absolutely. how, how do they figure it out? You know, like at four moms, we were looking at um, like, you know, thing, things like the way uh, fabrics captured in, in uh, extrusions, you know? So we were looking at, at uh, like sails and bikes and like things that had when, um, cables through them. When and you like, say extrusions, can you give like a more, like what's what's a physical example of like like, like an aluminum extrusion, right? So Wait. so oh, like, so how to uh, hold fabric into an aluminum? That's interesting. Right. So you know, like so you get a chunk of aluminum. There's fabric permanently bonded to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and like, how do you do that? Like one of the things I really rash. liked about our team was like, it wouldn't just be stapling stuff on or just putting a sleeve of fabric over it, right? Like so. We, interesting. We, we sewed in this binding and it actually made it easier to assemble and disassemble like for end of life and before because you just, it's not sewn to it. You just sleep, slip it out of the sleeve. And, oh, that's cool. You know, and you get this really sexy, like flush looking fit that, you know, it's like aluminum right up to fabric. Like, wait, just, so it's not permanently bonded, but you, you're, you've got a mate assigned. Okay. That's, that's really yeah, it, fucking cool. It's, it fits down there. That that's better because now you can throw it in the laundry or whatever. Yeah, so you can slide it out. So all of our, uh, you know, like the the early mamaroos, the origamis, all of that stuff, we were looking at um, using those aluminum extrusions and exposing all of that, right? Like, yeah. so most of the time in the baby industry, you just like cover it with a, you know, $20 sewn seat, you know, <laughs> whatever. And, you know, ours was some of the first gear, I, I feel like, to, to kind of have this exposed aluminum that you were like, whoa, that looks kind of like car interior or something, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're sexy designs, you know? I, I yeah. definitely am a fan of the work there, for sure. It was a lot of fun. I mean, uh, we, you know, I was there for almost nine years. Wow. And, uh, yeah, like I said, when when I started, we had the, they, they had the, the bathtub. What was your, what was your actual title at the end? Like, I realize you basically ran their whole design department, but yeah, so what at, did at the end you? I was the director of design. Badass. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, and that, that literally just kind of grew previous to that. I was at, um, Michael Graves design group. I don't um, know that I know that group yet. Yeah. I feel so like that, I that's it, but... out in Princeton, New Jersey. Oh, cool. That was my start right out of, right out of college was, um, Michael Graves, the world famous architect like postmodern style and stuff. That would explain uh, like all the postmodern shit that you love, which is a badass look, by the way. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, like, you know, you're, oh, you're learning from that. them and they did, uh, they ended up, uh, Michael had a partnership with Target, like early on. The reason Target's viewed still to this day as a design store, you know, like the designy store was because the CEO of, Target and Michael were taking a walk and he's like, you should let me design toasters and blenders for you. <laughs> and, you know, like the guy called him on it was like, all right, do what you can. Right. So nice. Michael being an architect um, designed, I think a line of like five to 10 products, you know, the, everybody knows the famous kettle, right. The Alessi kettle. That's this um, Chrome with the little bird on the top, you know, like, yeah. He designed that for an Italian place, Alessi, but then kind of took that design language and brought it through to toasters, blenders, mops, brooms, buckets, 
silverware, games, like everything. And that was my learning right out of school. I wow. Mean, it was, that's, yeah, that's, like, that's incredible. I mean, to, to be with that right historical into, firm. Yeah. You, you, you step into it as like a know nothing kid. It's like, yeah, I guess. And then you learn uh, how to make everything, you know, like literally we just had a stack of, of vendors that target would work with and you get the CAD together, you get a tech packet together. I mean, that work from then still informs the work I do for clients. Oh, I feel that way. I mean, like I, I maybe like when I was in school, I, I did a bunch of internship and I was not a good intern at all. I was, I was pretty, pretty bad at it, but, um, <laughs> it's, I just didn't have a great work ethic at that point in my career, if I'm being honest. And so, um, I don't know, like I, I um, but I learned a lot, right? I, I would just glom on to these amazing companies like SpaceX or Deep Local and, you know, yeah. I mean, it's SpaceX is really cool because, I mean, you know, you go to like the Air and Space Museum as a kid and then you're in a place where they're making, you know, rockets and at the time it was 2013 and you're just like, this is way fucking cooler than a museum and I'm getting to participate, like, wow. Oh, yeah. You know, yep. and so, I mean, it was, it was great. I mean, and yeah, I still use that knowledge. I mean, I, I just brought some practices from, you know, that I'd learned there, I should say, into form logic, right? And it's like, yeah, yeah it's still, still, it's still in the, uh, in the old brain, you know? Yep. If you learn, learn a little bit of process, you, you at least can say like, here's what worked at this last place. Here's what didn't work at this last place. It's exactly. Okay. And the more places you hit, and especially as, as a contractor consultant, I mean, the more clients you accrue and work with and help, I mean, like the more you learn, I mean, you and I met, uh, I believe at Innovation Works co-consulting, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, just, uh, I mean, we still, uh, you know, I've got a, a group of pretty close buddies who, uh, ended up in Pittsburgh kind of with me from Michael Graves. Badass. You know, like they, they kind of came to four moms and now they're all over at all kinds of different companies, but did you recruit um, a bunch of them? I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've I mean, been doing that at Formlogic lately. <laughs> yeah, you, you just start calling up your network, right? Yeah, that's like, it. Hey, there's this cool company. You ought to come. We can screw around. Yeah, and then you tell the company there's this awesome person. <laughs> so, but... so um, you know, we we still call it like you know Graves CAD, you know, because it's we learned a, a you know a particular style of SolidWorks building, and you know, like to us, like the the small group of us you can kind of grunt and be like, eh, and you get it immediately. You know what I mean? And so now all those people are all these other companies <laughs> and, you know, like I get to work with a lot of them, which is really cool. Um, you know, I can show up at a place having worked with somebody at four moms or, you know, through Michael Graves nice. and, and like that shorthand carries through so quickly, you know, that's bad. So this is on the client side now, just coincidentally, cause it's such a small yeah. world. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. So I actually, I, the other day, um, I won't say what the negotiation was, but I was involved in a legal negotiation and the, uh, the lawyer for the other party I was negotiating with was a buddy. <laughs> so I was like, Hey, what's up? How's it going? Mr. X. Good to see you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was just, you know, genuinely like this person of the human. So I was like really, really happy. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I mean, Pittsburgh is small. I, uh, I do make the point quite a bit whenever I'm, you know, talking about like having started my own firm and everything, you know, it's, it's, it's typically a dream of a lot of, you know, like early designers, entry designers, but I really, really could not have done it without the network that I had built up through all of these previous places. Absolutely. Right? I mean, you can only accomplish so much as an individual. If you picked base design up right now and dropped it in, Columbus or San Francisco or wherever I, I, you know what I mean? Like my client list just precipitously drops and it's not, it's not even the work, right? Like you can shop and sell clients. It's the, the infrastructure that you get, right? The, the conversations or the, Hey, Spencer, what's a good place to, um, you know, get machining done or, Hey, where do you get uh, PCB boards in town here? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like that kind of thing. Um, Let me make a few calls. Uh, I know three guys that are good at that. I'll get back to you in uh, 30 yeah. minutes, Cole. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it is, it is uh, those early days, I think it, it is all about kind of that network, and you don't know who's going to go along the ride with you, you know? 
Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's like that with the work I'm doing now. It's probably always going to be like that. I mean, I think yeah, it's, it's just having a career. <laughs> you know? Like well, it, I mean, if you, if you're, if you're results oriented, I mean, there's some people that seem not to have that, you know, where it's like, they just clock in and then leave, you know, and, and that's gotta be a miserable existence, I think. But, well, I mean, I think it's just different, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's what you value. So that's a good you point. Know, I, I was literally driving past the place today on the way to a meeting and was like, Oh, I wonder if that guy is still there. You know? And I was like, that guy was there 10 years ago. And he's still there, you know what I mean? And I'm just thinking, like, boy, what's that like to go in every day for 15, 20 years? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, but yeah. but you also develop, uh, you know, an expertise in that area. A lot of people like that, um, the repeatability, the, uh, yeah. the the knowledge base that you build, the the sense of ownership. You know, like that that's important too. Yeah, just a different, uh, I'm, I guess I'm, you're right because. Lady. You can be a subject matter expert that doesn't leverage your network. I guess I was referring more to like people that um, just hate their jobs, right? And so like to, to not be motivated. So you find a job where you can slide by, you know, and just kind of you, you clock in, you clock out, and then you're you're just you don't really give a fuck about what you do. You're you're not living to work. You're working to live. Yeah, and, but and most I, of your waking hours are spent at work, and so like that's what I meant. But it sounds like what you're saying is like. If you find a niche and, and you're good at it and you're and there's gotta be pleasure in that too right it's just a I different mean, kind of pleasure yeah, that, that's all i'm saying is yeah. there, i think there could be you know it takes all kinds in this world right like yeah for um, sure but yeah it, it like, i think that's one of the things that they really don't do enough of in in uh high schools even early elementary schools you know like just just telling people what people do you know i think so many people just end up you know, falling into whatever job and then you they look around and it's 30 years later. And wow. They, and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, but that's one of the fun things about like making this podcast, even though, like I said, like it doesn't have much viewership now, but I, um, I really like just talking to people about like what they do. And, and I learn things about my friends and, and, you know, professional associates, I should say, uh, whatever friends, associates. Yeah. it's all the same thing. Yeah. And uh, like, especially if you're a workaholic, I mean, they blend together. <laughs> and so it's, um, I learned stuff about people I talked to on here that like, I've known people for years, but we never get into these conversations because the interview format, you're just like kind of forced to ask people. Not you're yeah. forced. I like to ask people penetrating questions. on, And then so it's like, oh, shit, fuck, you were involved in that? Like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. No, yeah, I mean, it, it, like, there's so much to it. And like, we're lucky enough in today's day and age that you can work remote, you can work from home, you can like do all of this, right? So one of the one of the really like rewarding things is my daughter Rose, she's six, but um, she's watching all of this like grow around her, right? So when you say all of this, you mean oh, like, you mean the remote work culture and, and the infrastructure to support it? Everything we're doing, yeah. So you know, like we've got bases the consultancy client base spruce is our own oh way selling product, right like yeah. we've got uh, we're we're excited to you know be getting into like um the like airbnb short-term rental you're doing that that's cool uh, like renovating stuff you know and like but you always uh, had you know, incredible taste in like interior decorate and so i feel like that's going to be a good it's going to be fun to Get to show that off a little bit to your guests and create exactly. like that for them. Kind of clean it up a little bit, find yeah. find something that's a little rough, and then apply that kind of same like, how can we do this for a little bit of cash but turn it around? But but Rose is getting to watch all that. Like that's yeah. so cool to me to like. Well, if she's sick, she's probably like figuring bits I, of it out, which is cool I'm, too. I'm literally sitting there with her last night, and I started doing uh, a um, an expense income chart for like a business and explaining it to her like I, holy yeah, balls that's know. awesome and i'm like rose so we got spruce right let's say we sell the leash bags and we make ten thousand dollars now that ten thousand do we have employees yeah you have erica okay so <laughs> hey, erica. okay and then what do we do here and did, do we pay rent on the building yeah how much okay and you you know what i mean like that's I'm awesome explaining to a six-year-old 
you know, like what you end up with on your. Uh, she's probably going to take over the world one day. <laughs> it's I, incredible. I mean, she's got her own little crayon business, you know, <laughs> crayons and making little heart shaped necklaces, you know. So. Wait, she um, was she like melts them down? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she came up with the idea to like you know melt the little scraps of crayons. Yeah. And get some mold, so she started melting them and making them little heart necklaces of these melted crayons. And Silicone stuff. molds, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yep, nice. Yep. And so we were. Did like, she repurpose like a chocolate mold, or did she make her own? Yeah, no, it was it was like a like the silicone kind smarter of smarter bicots. No, I, I like her style. And I was uh, too bad. Child labor is illegal. I want to hire this girl. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I even made her pay for her tooling, right? So we were in like uh, I think awesome. it was Bed Bath Beyond where we bought the molds, and I was like, "All right, Rose, these are four ninety nine. And you have no money. <laughs> you are in debt right now, four ninety nine for your tooling. That's bad. You got to sell X amount of, you know, like uh, necklaces to pay back your tooling. That's <laughs> you know? fucking like, amazing. I mean, like, what six year old gets that kind of talk to him? You know? Well, I mean, it, you. That is, I'm jealous of her. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a great upbringing. Me too. I, I, you know, I'm just like, damn, nobody told me any of this stuff. Well, of course. See, my parents like hate it. Like I, I sold locker alarms when I was 13 and I always got chastised for making a mess with my soldering iron and all these there bits. And I was like, clean that shit up. And I'm just like, no. <laughs> see, and she'll, she'll probably end up just doing something completely unrelated. That's like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. My dad's always ranting about, you know. For sure. I mean, there's like a parody, right? It seems at least, you know, and everyone wants to rebel, but like, it's still a cool lesson. I mean, that, that'll probably come in at some point, right? Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't think you can know too much about business. Yeah. Um, just, you know, no, I, agree. Ever... I mean, like even going from, you know, and I shouldn't say going from, I mean, I still own SK and we have active projects, but, um, you know, doing that and nothing but that for, you know, six years and then going into form logic and coming in, um, you know, as a director has been pretty awesome because like you have so many advantages as somebody that's run a business, yeah. you know, soup to nuts and, and done all the stuff from receivables to, um, you know, swiping the floor to like facilities, to actual engineering, to recruiting, to, yeah. I mean, everything, you know, toilet gets clogged. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to fix it. Well, and, and think about that first, like, uh, that first invoice you said, right? Like, oh, fact, dude. Like that and just like. I jumped in the oh, ear and I clicked my heels together. Like, like what's your dick from the Wizard of Oz? Like, I was so excited. You know, I, I, yeah. I may as well have like screamed with Beatlemania or whatever. Like, and, and what's crazy is like, there the large percentage of people will never do that, right? They'll never. Why well, won't even cross their mind that the way you invoice for something is X and the and you do this and you do you know you like notice they, differences in the thinking of people that have done that and people that haven't. So I've started asking. At first, I was kind of thinking like I shouldn't ask these things, but I'm like no, it, it factors into my decision making to know how much things cost. And so if I understand the time value of everybody's labor, you know what it costs to run the business, you know things that like a lot of people would think are not like really polite to ask, but I'm, no, I, I, I should know these things so that I can make appropriate decisions and, and actually weigh dollar amounts against each other. So I started just asking our CEO, I'm like, you know, what is the weight rate of this guy? What does this cost? You know, how much does that? And I'm making better decisions as a result of knowing that data. I'm like, I, now I factor it in and I look at it like the same way I would in SKA. I'm just like, oh, it's X number of dollars. This is a better choice. And it's not always apparent, right? Like sometimes like, and this is a particularly common rookie mistake. You know, like, I'm sure you've been here as an intern early in your career. I know I was, but like, you, you think like, I'm going to save the company money. I'm going to spend, you know, I'm, I'm going to get like a used machine. I'm going to put all these hours of rehab into it. And, you know, it'll be, you know, a $500 machine instead of a $3,000 machine, but you don't realize your own salary <laughs> offsets that, you know, and, and now you've cost the company money. And so, you know, it's like, I don't that know. was one of the, uh, you know, like, like I said, at, at four moms, it was, you know, it was a six person company. It was, you know, 15 people for a long time. Um, and you know, the, the, this is my personal, you, you, you've heard me go into this a little bit before, but just like, there is something about a siloed department that limits that, that sight line, right? Like, interesting. Uh, you know, like 
engineering. When you say siloed, you mean isolated, just to be clear. I, I, what, I, what I mean is like a, in a traditional company, that's, you know, just a traditional company setup, right? You have sales, you have marketing, you have like, a, you know, running the, the, biz, the business development. Operations. Like so HR sales. people. Okay. Got it. You've got engineering. You have, you know, like all of these different silos, right? Okay. In my great experience, and this, you know, this will be the the controversial, like yeah, whatever thing that I say, but like, <laughs> fucking engin- heavy. Tend to only focus on engineers' costs, right? So Wait. they say, I'm saving the I'm saving the company so much money by doing this, or I, you know, like I'm we are thinking about how the, you know, like how to save the money on the engineering silo. Oh, interesting. So just by spending less on engineers, basically. If you right? don't, if you don't have the transparency to the entire business, you might not know that like, thanks for saving us the $200 on the machine. Like you do know that we sell 50,000 of these things a month. Right. And so, <laughs> you know, you know, like yeah, maybe we should engineer it correctly, you know, and, and maintain our reputation, which is why we sell these there. in the first place. And I think seeing that whole picture is pretty important. Now there's, there is a balance, right? Like there's a lot of stuff where, like you said, when, when, when you're younger and a go-getter, you're like, man, like, let me in all these meetings so I understand the whole picture. And no offense, yeah. but if you're, you know, like engineering, the, you know, the, the, the rear view mirror on this thing, you don't need to see the whole picture. It's fine. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. but at well, the same time, like that is a, that is a, uh, a really tight path to weave of like how you, how you learn that. Right. You, yeah. you just alluded to like, it took you doing business for yourself to then go to another place and be hyper aware of it or understand that. Sure. No, I, I, I never really stopped thinking about it. I, I still treat it like a business owner. I'm like, and there's, there's that coin flip, right. Of like, yeah. I, I, I've been at both places too. And I can tell you how I like, but as an employee at form, you must've felt like a business owner a little bit. You know, I, I super like, like I was fully bought in, but what yeah. I realized at, at the end of it was like, what I viewed as, you know, kind of like my personal ownership in the company, my stake, like what I felt like I was putting into it was not commiserate with uh, what what the industry or what the, the company felt. Right? Oh, interesting. Like, like, you mean like you just were more bought in than your coworkers, basically? I would have to be pulled tooth and nail to hire another designer and another designer and another designer to the point that like, you know, the executives were like saying to me, we need more designers so we can make more products faster. And I kept saying, I know, but really like, if you give me just two weeks, that'll be done and we can move on to the next one. And then we won't have to lay off the designer that we just hired. Oh, Um, that's brutal. Then we won't have, we had 20 designers on staff at four moms. And we had 75 like high end robotics engineers. 75? Holy shit, the burn on that. I mean, so you figure like, like, <laughs> fuck, if I had to guess, I'll probably get the numbers wrong, but maybe 90 grand a head on average times 75. Right? <laughs> and the other thing is, uh, it, it was tough like watching that that you know like that value like shift all around the place you know and and you really do look at it and you're like you know it's it's just an interesting fact that when we were 15 people 20 people we shipped probably four to five like brand new from ground to on the market products big important crazy stuff in you know three years when we were at 190 people with offices in Hong Kong and uh, all, you know, like, like I said, everything at our disposal. Guess how many products we launched? Zero in three years. Actually? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Jesus. you just literally watched, and, and you could argue that the development cycles for things like a car seat are longer, sure. Yeah. But the amount of, uh, you know, just like, I, I mean, it, it can only be described as 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 bloat as yeah, you know, I, I as 
chasing too many leads at once, you know, and it, it wasn't being treated like it was in the day. Like there were meetings when we were 15 people and 20 where everybody in the room, whether you're in sales, HR, engineering, design, whatever, looked at each other and said, the most important thing is the trade show this weekend, right? Everybody's yeah. focused on it, not, oh, that's the car seat team. Oh, that's for us right now, it's the new factory. And so everybody and their mother is just laser focused on achieving that goal. It's actually a really exciting place to be. Yeah. How, so, many, how many folks are over there? I mean, just rough. You don't have to. <laughs> I don't know if I should say it, so I'm not going to, but yeah, um, probably a similar size to, you know, like that, that early. I mean, we just raised a series A of 40 million. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I saw that. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, it, I mean, it seems like they've got their heads on straight and it's a really cool, like a uh, business model. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know, like, the CEO is like a really interesting dude, uh, Paul Sutter, um, he raised, not raised, he earned, his last company got $400 million in revenue, so there's uh, an yeah. advertising company called Quantcast, and um, hmm. yeah, so that, I mean, it's just a really, like, awesome dude, like, when I when I came in the first time to, uh, which I was trying to sell them SKA services at the time, sure. but um I, uh, I just remember that he was sweeping the floor, right? You know, and I, I was I was really impressed by that. You know, the fact that you know yeah. he wasn't too good for that task, right? And and I think that culture sort of persists throughout the company, and it's it's really good to see that. Yep. And no, the, the, the most successful companies, I think, have a certain amount of that. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I, I try to be like that too. I mean, I remember I had, I had a mentor tell me probably like four years ago you know like you got to sweep the floor <laughs> you know like first of all people need to see you doing it and second of all like it's it's a great break from you know tasks that just tax your brain and just to I get mean, the wrench turned or the floor swept or a toilet plunge like it's it's just good to get you know like you know a little bit that's of exactly something i i i uh i fully believe and it's something i kind of like holler about to anybody that'll listen but you know, like life is not about building an empire, right? Like it's, it, life is treated far too much like a race to the top or uh, climbing the ladder or building, building, building. And if you boil it down, like life really is just a series of moments from day to day, right? You know, everybody talks about it in the, in the context of like, oh, you look up one day and your life's over and you wonder what you did, you know, like, yeah, but that's total horseshit. If you find those, those moments of nuance, yeah. you know, and if you find those um, those enjoyable things of just sweeping the floor and meeting with clients and doing stuff that makes you excited, you know, like yeah. meaningful stuff, then like that's the more important thing, right? Like, but if you can make a client's day better, like you know, if you can if you can be a hero in that one moment, I mean, that's. You don't forget that. Like, I mean, that, that stays with you. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm sure you've got tons of those wins under your belt that, you know, it's you, just not, it's you just not about it. the, the growth is, is my biggest point. You know, like the, you know, the, I, I talk to a lot of people and they're like, well, how, how's clients? You have, you, you have, you have clients. How's, how's it going? How's it going? And I'm just like, I hate that. I don't know. Like, it's a strong it, word. I don't fine. enjoy the that. The lights are on. We're, we're working. We're happy. You know, the, the people that I work with are, are uh, you know, excited and happy to be here. They're fairly competitively compensated. We're we're all smiling. Like, what right? else do you want? You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, it's um, not an interrogation, but, like, sometimes I feel that way. If I'm at, you know, like a networking event or whatever, it, it just seems like people are trying to pin down your whole pipeline. And, well, and it's, it's like, it's, come on. It's just <laughs> because it, I think all of it is viewed. The, the thing I that really did like shift for me mentally was, was just thinking about like, I am happy because I keep my agency tiny and agile and is, as lean as we can be, because I like it. I like to go skiing. I like to nice. go mountain biking. That's you awesome. You know what I mean? Like I'm closing the office in March and going down the Grand Canyon for 25 days. You know? like, what do you like, do in the Grand Canyon for 25 days? I'm interested rafting, in that. Rafting. The oh, whole that's thing. cool it's going to be incredible. And like, but that's what life is about. Right. So like, 
yeah. I don't get real hung up about. Well, I think like, it's what? both. Like it, it's, I mean, at least for me, like the work stuff is really, really fun. But I mean, I just took that month in Europe. That was really, really fun too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it is like, uh, it's just that blend. Right. And like, I, I think that especially at like networking events or, or, you know, like things like that meetings, uh, you know, getting it, the same industry together, like it tends to just be this, uh, you know, dick measuring contest. Yeah, and, yeah, I've noticed it's unhealthy. that. And it, it, it's just so much better to be the quiet person in the room and just go, that's cool. You know, like, it's just such a, you know, position of mental clarity and, like, you just watch everybody go, oh, we just signed on uh, this guy. Oh, man, we're so busy. We're so busy. And you just go, Jesus, yeah, awesome. no, you can cool. sense the desperation. Yeah, I mean... It's got to be know, empty inside. I, I remember... I won't say who, but there was someone I talked to in a networking event a while ago, you know, and they were like, it's a little bit tangential, so, uh, you know, I apologize if I'm missing the point, but, you know, it's some on the lines of like, um, you know, like, where you typically recruit from? And I'm like, well, you know, I, I still, you know, at the time, you know, I, I had pretty good ties to Carnegie Mellon University. So, you know, to be honest, I mean, most of, the people I hire, like, you know, I'll ask like, you know, Mark Baskinger or like, you know, yeah. like Wayne Chung or, you know, John Dolan, like just, you know, someone I know, like a prof, you know, like, you know, if I'm looking for somebody junior, like, who do you know that's really skilled at this? And like, you know, they just, you know, send good people and, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome. And so this person's response was like, oh, we couldn't afford to hire out of that pool. Like, like well, how do you expect to retain talented people if you don't pay them well like you know like just yeah you know like yeah. compensate people well you know you don't need to scrape every amount of margin and i i always also make the point that you never know what's going on in somebody's books or behind closed doors right so yeah um it, it it's a mental trap to look at either your your competition is either like an agency or in a different industry or whatever it is and to look at them and say oh my god they must be rolling in the cash and so happy it's all smoke and mirrors or so whatever you know what i mean and yeah. and then you know you just don't know maybe maybe they make twice as much as you think they do maybe they don't make half yeah but what does it matter it none of it matters <laughs> what they <laughs> make. that's the important thing about all this is like it doesn't matter are you that's happy? awesome are you doing what you want you know <laughs> yeah you know? i think that's a beautiful outlook um i, I gotta be honest yeah i mean i i it, it if not sounds like else, happiness <laughs> the truth, right like it's it's a little bit uh i don't know it's it, it's trying to be one of my favorite books is zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance you know i've heard and good you, things i haven't read it yet uh it's i mean jumping in you gotta it took me three or four reads to you know like kind of get the whole picture but you get a little bit and then a little bit more and a little bit more but it really is that uh, that mentality of of what does it all mean i had a high school math teacher that recommended that book to me and i still haven't read it i feel she was a real mentor to me at a low point in my life and yeah it just it, it, it's really it's took me under book. her wing it's it's philosophical in, in a, in a Zen aspect, but it's filtered through something that guys like you and I that are engineer, designer, mechanics in our sure. minds, like it filters it through that lens, right? You know, it's, that's interesting. Yeah. That probably would resonate with me. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you, you should, you should hop on it. I'm such uh, a, a workaholic these days that I feel like my, I, I, I'm kind of addicted. Like I, I really love history, and so uh, I just read this book called um, "Freedom's Forge" about like production in World War II, and just yeah, all. Cool. It was interesting. Uh, Ariel yeah. recommended it actually. Yeah. And uh, it was about um, just basically like the U.S. was able to outproduce every other nation in the world because it's kind of a love letter to capitalism. I'll be honest, and so like it, it was. Just talking about like competitive bidding and the fact that people are actually incentivized to make insane amounts of stuff, you know, and and then you know like the focus on production versus like craftsmanship. So the fact that like 
the Germans were, you know, like making their stuff and then like spending all this time on fitment, you know, to get like their tank parts to fit together where like the U S standardized and was able to hit tolerance and create and, you know, introduce looser tolerances. And then we just produced yeah. like, you know, way more fucking weapons than they did. That's cool. I, I need to yeah. check that out. That's, I mean, that sounds right up my alley. It, it's awesome. I, I, do, I do audiobooks. I did all. too. So it's a 12 hour audible is what it yep. is. It's on audible. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I stopped getting the credits because I, I thought it was a little bit of a, a hustle. I, I didn't consume them at the rate that they, they get given to me. So sure, I just they paid the dollar up. amount. What's that? They get stacked up, but yeah, I mean, you, that was it. Pretty nice to be like, all right, I get three new books and hit the road. Well, so what I noticed I started doing was I, I, I would feel, comp and I think this is by design. They would stack up. I'd have like six credits and then I'd feel compelled to go on a spending spree. And get all these books and then i just wouldn't read them i'd have like you know stuff i'm like well this is cool on my shelf my virtual library i'd show yeah, off to my I friends how smart i am with this book i would like to read someday I, i'm like a it's voracious it's in it's in it's you know it's, badass uh, when do you find time like when do you usually consume these oh i mean it's it's like any day that i don't have uh employees in the office or the studio like I, it's just in one year. I, how do you how do you do that, but also do like a, a design job? Because I feel like for me at least, if I'm listening to something like that, it's mentally blocking. I've, and I can't I've, do engineering. I've got a uh, my. It makes my wife pretty out angry, but like, I can I can listen to something, read something, and have the TV on while I'm doing design. You know what I mean? All like, four at the same time. Yeah, I mean, like... I, so I, are you one of these people I, that can listen to two different things at once in either ear and consume both simultaneously? Yeah, it's... I, I mean, it's... Like, That's badass. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fucking awesome. I think, it, I think it's grown up in a house where everybody's talking over one another. You know, that's what my wife says. It's like, yeah. no wonder you can listen to stuff and hear what they're saying and they're saying because in your... Well, house, I'm getting better at it, to be awesome. honest. I don't... I'm not, I'm not sure if it's really fast multiplexing. So if I'm, like, switching, like... Ooh, or if it's like I'm genuinely consuming multiple streams because it's, I feel yeah, like it's it's the former converging on the latter. There's, and so, there's certainly a level of like, oh, I missed that. And then you're like, it doesn't matter. Keep going, you know, like whatever. Well, that's difficult for me. Well, it isn't as much as it used to be, but it used to be that I would fixate and I would play the same chapter over and over because I really wanted to understand a paragraph. And and now I'm like, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not fucking important. Yep. I'll get it again if I need to. Yep, yep. Life is transient, man. Amen to that. <laughs> that's kind of that's that's my theme for this uh, for this podcast. Maybe. No, I, I think it's a beautiful and, and a truthful thought. To be honest, I mean, life definitely is transient, and I mean, you can go a few ways with that, right? Like you can you can go totally hedonistic, be like, you know, fuck it, <laughs> just let yourself go. You know, I've certainly had phases, you know, where I'm just, you know, like loving fancy foods and you gain like 30 pounds and, you know, that's fun in its own way. But then you can also go like totally career oriented and just be like, I'm going to be fucking amazing at this, you know, and that's really fulfilling and fun. And it's nice to have the validation, you know. I've, I've always been super jealous of the people who are... Uh tremendous at, at uh, sketching or yeah. you know amazing at CAD or the the best mountain biker I've ever ridden with or whatever it is yeah what you what what I never have for that kind of stuff is that single-minded goal right like you talk to that person you're like hey what are you doing today They're like sketching and you're, like, <laughs> and you're like so what do you what do you want to do tomorrow they're like I'm sketching and you're like that's oh, fucking so amazing like, you sketch huh <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've never had that, you know, like, I, I mean, I, I jump around way too much with anything Yeah. And because of that. I've never become an expert in anything, you know, so I, I know the feeling. Right. And so, I mean, as a result, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not great at low level tasks versus high level tasks. Like, I'm, well, I'm, I was going to say like, though, you have, you have what I consider to be a, a very deep expertise on the robotics, the hardware, like you. all of, all of that you know, the stuff that you do with SK and, you know, like, sure. Appreciate like that. you have a, a super deep, well, I, I would consider the way you approach things kind of very, um, you talk about T and I shape or <laughs> T shaped and I don't know what the other one is. T shaped people, right. It's like, 
there's there's all these skill sets and yeah. you're like you're driven by this one you know that's a t-shaped person you look at that as like robotics i i think i think for you that you, yeah. you have uh you know like like i said it feels like you have such a and there's a lot that bleeds into it, the the passion for it the knowledge base for it the expertise for it i do love it for it right like you you love it but then so i look at it as like but i i mean i've know a little bit about electrical i know a little bit about mechanical i know a little bit about tooling i know a little bit about you know the firmware. Stuff that you're saying though i know a little bit about these that. different programming languages and how they work but i don't really do that stuff these days anymore so i see that as scatter brand sure but you have to understand a little bit about sales on that lens a little bit yeah all the things you just said are in service to building That's robotic true. computer hardware, right? You just Good said point. software, electronics, this, that, you know, like literally everything you named, nothing you named was like, oh, and I also like fly fishing. Oh, can I, can I, can I do the thing I want to do earlier? <laughs> just, just to be a contrarian asshole. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show people that are watching right now how to mix a Manhattan <laughs> because <laughs> I just thought it'd be a funny gag to introduce into the podcast. So First, you want a maraschino cherry. Um, I use Luxardo cherries because I think they're very delicious. Um, expensive as fuck, but tasty. Yeah. So I'm gonna use one because there's already two in my glass hanging out. Uh, you Where can add a little bit of extra of cherry. Do what's that? We're just bottom of the barrel pink syrup in our house. You know, whatever the whatever the cherry juice is. <laughs> Dude, you gotta try these Luxardos if you haven't yet. They're really really good. So yeah, sounds good. I um. I, I try not to write stuff down on this, but like if I was not doing this, I would be like um, making a note to buy some of the cherries. I'll, I'll remember the yellow label next time. I'm yeah. they're all, it's, it's like a $30 bottle but, or jar, but they're, they're really, really good. Jeez. All right. So now that you've got your maraschino cherry in there, um, you're going to want to add some whiskey. Uh, I like this Basil Hayden bourbon. It's quite good, but Manhattan's one of those things where you're gonna choose a harsher one. So, like, if you got something that's like 110 proof, probably good in Manhattan. All right, so I try to go three parts whiskey. Uh, so I'm pretty good at eyeballing these. If you're really serious about it, you will measure. Um, and then I go one part vermouth. Uh, I'm gonna mispronounce this, but this is uh, Antica Formula. Sure, I've pronounced that horribly wrong, but it's it's a very good vermouth that is great in a Manhattan. Throw it up. Taste it. Um, it tastes balanced and good. So that's how you make a Manhattan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm an old fashioned man. Keep nice. the vermouth and I'll put the bourbon in. Wait, okay. how do you make a how do you make an old fashioned? Oh, the, the old fashioned is uh, a simple syrup with either a rye or bourbon. Um, a dash of bitters. We we go extra heavy on the bitters in the house. I love bitters. Uh, a slice of orange and a cherry. Oh, that sounds very good. Same kind of deal. It's the uh, you don't get the the kind of heaviness of the vermouth. You know, like that that kind of like either bitter or sweet, depending on what you got. You know, it's like the old man's drink. You know, where you're like. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I mean, I feel like that being a whiskey drinker most of the time. So. <laughs> yeah scotch is where where you you get into that i've got a couple friends that are like scotch aficionados and you're like all right we're literally drinking like peat moss and smoke right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah i feel like the stuff from scotland sometimes is like offensively peaty like it's just like a little a little much for me yeah i i mean i can drink pretty near anything and it's like all right this one's all right <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's... engineering and cocktails, huh? Yeah, well, I mean, I also there was a time in my life when I considered being a chef, and so um, I, I had some stuff that wasn't that great happen to me in high school, and I, I wasn't able to build anything for a while, um, and uh, as a result, I uh, had to find another passion for a few years. So I uh, I learned about cooking by reading cookbooks. Oh yeah. And um, yeah. I, I would I would cook whenever I got the opportunity and I, I got pretty good at it um, and I only ever held like a couple of jobs so I, I was a line cook uh, at a sushi joint 
a catering company, so like not a real sushi joint. I would roll out like 400 California rolls in the morning, <laughs> and they'd last the whole day. No, you probably get good at it. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it was really fun. Um, and and just it's, you talk about like a satisfying, repetitive manual task. I mean, that was that was what that was. How old were you when you were doing that work? I would have been like 22, 21. Okay. Uh, no, actually, maybe even younger, now that I'm thinking about it, because that was when I started drinking underage. And so, um, meaning, like, I, I my my whole thing was, like, I never got a fake ID, but I enjoyed going to bars when I was, like, 19, 18, 19. And so what I, what I liked doing was just being really, like, friendly and, and just getting to know the bartenders and then ordering a drink. And so... I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, Anthony Bourdain built a whole career on that mentality, right? The... the the kitchen staff, the chefs, you know, all going out and knowing the bartenders, knowing, you know, like the people. And I mean, Anthony Bourdain's a personal, uh, did you read kitchen book. confidential? Oh yeah. Uh, Dude, that's, I, I've I actually not watch watched it. much of his show. I'll be honest, but kitchen confidential, I've probably read three times. Yeah. And I mean, it's one it's, of my favorite, you know, I, I, you, the guy really resonates with me too. Um, he, he's a, a smart, smart guy. And, uh, and I read that after I, I, had that brief, you know, career stint where I thought about doing that, and then I found the yeah. CMU Robotics Club, and that's what pulled me back into robotics. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, then that's how quickly your life could have shifted, right? No, no, I was clean out storage unit. Um, it would have been uh, it was like three or four years ago. I don't remember exactly when, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I tossed a piece of paper with the hash key for three bitcoins on it into the, into a garbage can because I didn't realize what was in my cabinet. But it's one of those things where you piece it together in your brain. You're like, holy shit, that's where I put that. Oh, I hate myself. Oh, man. But then yeah. the other thing I found when I was throwing that filing cabinet, like, I, yeah, it's like you try to clear out clutter, right? And so you, you have all this sketches, like I, a bunch of sketches I made, and there was a piece of paper that kind of fluttered out. And, you know, I was trying not to be sentimental and just clear out crap. So, you know, I inadvertently got rid of $150,000 of Bitcoin. <laughs> At the time, I, I got them for $20 a Bitcoin. I only spent $60 on it, but That's, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. the other thing I did that I that I found and eventually threw out, but I looked at it for a minute, was a piece of paper that it, it said, um, was it like um, chef, software engineer, roboticist, business owner. <laughs> and I, I saw yeah. those as all being different career paths at the time. You know, and I wasn't sure how to, like, what to do. And I rate up pros and cons. <laughs> I had like pros and cons. You open itself into, like, pretty much the whole the whole package, right? Like, in different ways. No, yeah, thanks. I mean, I still love to cook. It's it's one of my favorite yeah. things. I mean, that was a great thing to come out of quarantine was, like, cooking more. I mean, I, I, I sort of fell victim, I think, to, like, the, you know, for a little bit at least, like, going out a little too much or thinking you have to treat yourself and, Sure. You know, it's yeah, it's not bad. necessarily more satisfying. I mean, even if you, you can afford it, right? It's not really like I don't know, there's something to be said for like hanging out with friends and, and like making a meal or even by yourself, you know, like yeah. going no, through the I mean, motions of cooking something really good. It's healthier you most of the time. I think you know, that's the big thing though, is like as part of that, right? Like if you would have gone into um, that industry like as a job. You, you might have killed your passion for it, right? Like, oh, for sure. You know, like, they're, they're, you, you, you balance those things, right? But I'm still passionate about robotics, at least now. Maybe I'll sure. use that. Yeah, I, and, but I think that that's probably what allows you to be, right? If, if, if Oh, you mean the fact that I've got some diversity of hobbies and interests? Yeah, you're probably right. It's just, it's just a different, it's a different flavor, right? Like, well, I mean, I, in the evenings, you know, I record these things, so I get to bullshit with awesome people like you, you know, and that's really fun too. And it make, and I barely yeah, sleep true. anymore, but like, I'm, it's weird, right? Like, I, I mean, I, I this is probably saying too much about myself, but I, I didn't get any sleep the night before last. The night before that, I also did not get any sleep. You've last always... night, I got seven hours of sleep and I feel great. I feel the seven hours was such a treat. I feel energized. I'm pretty convinced you're manic. <laughs> Every time I talk to you, you're like, yeah, I was actually up all night. Uh, you know, I'm like, damn, dude, I, I, I definitely kind of need my routine. Of, you, you might know. be right. I, um, I, I, I've, I can count, I can't count the number of all nighters I've pulled and, and double all nighters. Like I just mentioned it become a thing. 
in the last few years where like I, i'm just like fuck it i'll keep working <laughs> i guess I, I got so much shit like the same the same person at that professional event that was like talking about how they couldn't afford you know like to hire you know higher end talent we'll say was also saying that like you know how could you stay up all night working on a thing I'm like because i'm having fun working on the thing you know <laughs> yeah i mean i want to let the team down i don't know <laughs> But, yeah, it's, a, it's the same deal of, uh, you know, like it, when I when I left college with industrial design degree, you know, like if you asked, I wanted to be the next insert famous designer at the time. You, you know, yeah, I know that feeling too. I found some stuff I did when I was a kid that disgusted me. I look back <laughs> at it. <laughs> but but like it, it's it's all about like that kind of like that passion and it like it's all I could think about was design. If you if you ask me like. Who I was as a person. I was an industrial designer, and I wanted to be the next, you know, whatever, whatever. And you were sketching. That's that's not uh, that's not what I want to do anymore. You know what I mean? Like, do you think like, like it, raising a family it, and and building that has to do with that at all? Because I, I, I haven't done that at this point, so maybe that's in really sure. some way. Well, I mean, it's it's age, it's experience. It's, um, you know, having a family, being into that, it's finding other things that light you up, like, you know, just, you know, human relationships and stuff like, yeah, well, that's important. It's, it's the most important, I think, you know what I mean? I look back at that and I was like the, uh, the hard charging, you know, like 26 year old, 28 year old, whatever. And, uh, you know, it, it's great to have passion and drive and determination but almost everybody I've talked to, when they zoom that lens out, you know, myopically uh, as, as they age or as, as they progress, yeah. there's, it feels like there's very few 75-year-olds on top of their industry. They're like, I'm just so driven by it. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I see what you're saying. Artists, right? Like, you can be the celebrity architect that, you know, like is still the expert on it. But I'll bet Michael Graves towards, you know, like at the end of his life, didn't have the same burning thing. Yeah, I see what you're saying. As he did when he left college and was going to take on the world, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's true. And I, I just think that it's... But you're not that much like, older than me is the, is the funny bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 30, 39. I'm, I'm yeah, I'm 33, 30, right? It's a, it's a six-year yeah. difference. That's not a whole lot of time. Yeah, I mean, it, it probably is a, a fair amount of, you know, having a six-year-old upstairs, you know, like going to bed right now and, um, you know, like balancing all of that. Like I said, I'm I'm really into, you know, like the, the house and the renovation stuff. That's and, cool. Like, Kevin's really into that too, uh, Kevin. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Ke Kevin's actually my tool buddy. He lives right <laughs> around the corner. That's and, I just uh, saw his place the other day. I it, I put that yeah. together. I've been to your place too. He's got some, yeah. uh, you know, beautiful projects he's done. He's really into like building stuff. That dude walls. is like a super nerd, like I, in the best way. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like, I, I love him. Like, I, I kind of wish he was my about, dad, if I'm being honest. Have you ever told you about the stone walls that he built? He showed them to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and, and like, he should be proud. Like, did you see the A frame he made to put in that those steps? With all the, you know, just the beams and chain. Listening to Kevin Dowling talk about his tool collection is like, but you see, he's jizzing over that, right? So like, you talk about like, you know, you're not, you don't think this dude's like passionate about the career. It's like, you, you're still passionate, right? Like you find another thing to pour your heart right. and soul into. That's exactly it. It's like, you know, leading expert on all this robotic stuff and just a, a so knowledgeable. Well, and the shit that he's got in his office. office. He's super excited to talk to you about the old 1920s wood <laughs> plane that he got. For, you know, <laughs> oh, you're I talking know. about those ones that could put a radius on a thing. <laughs> yeah. this when you're a student or when you're when you're young in that hard charger. I remember. But he's so still like that. Oh. Meeting people and going, oh, but let's talk about design. Let's talk about design, and they're talking about. Uh, the painting that they just did right or yeah. or the, the the tying fly fishing right like that's that's a well-rounded person that understands kind of 
Well, all you get ideas from all that for work too, is the thing, right? Like that's sure. not that's not necessarily. Yeah, but I don't think it's about getting the ideas for work. Well, no, no I, I agree with you. I, <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I, I think having a professional drive is more similar than different to yeah. having a hobby you're really passionate about. Like I, I think passion is passion. I mean, yeah. if you're into a thing and you pour your soul into it, like you're just into a thing and you're you're, you're enjoying. Like what I do is is not at all about like the money. I mean, you know, like the money's good, but it's not why I do it. I, I do it because I love it, and I'm, I'm you know, and I, I'm just addicted. <laughs> I really, really like making cool shit, but I also really, really like cooking, and I also really, really like international travel and meeting people. And I, I think we're fortunate that we have careers where we can be passionate about it and. It's a it's a life you know it's a living so I agree. Um, I'm pretty for pretty pretty uh, thankful every day that you know like that I found industrial design and you know like yeah uh, I was gonna be the I was gonna be a movie director I think was interesting you know, as an impressionable young you know when young what age movie. were you when you were thinking about that career path so I oh that was that was like freshman year of college you know like it's about all i was when i was doing the sushi well maybe like yeah. sophomore year but yeah because you're finding yourself you don't know anything right and you you watch a bunch of uh, a bunch of stanley kubrick and tarantino movies oh those guys are know. fucking i, I just watched I'm apocalypse gonna, now on the flight back i'm gonna be a director year. that's what i'm gonna do and you know like thank god josh owen uh I'll give a call out to him. Like, he really did save me. You know, he's an industrial design professor, and he just happened to be in office hours just randomly for the whole school, right? Anybody could walk in. Oh, cool. He happened to be in industrial design, and he said, Oh, man, you're coming into my class next year. Like, he's like, Give me six months, give me a year, and if you don't, if you still want to be a director, go do it. <laughs> he said that to you? Not, you know, and like, and honestly, like, it, it just kind of like, kindled it so i had a um i'm not going to do the accent but I, I had this mentor as an undergrad who was from st petersburg russia and um he emigrated here in 1982 um and he's like like you know, a russian jew a uh, great dude like one of my favorite people he treated me like a son last time i was in cleveland when i visited him like really really sweet guy um he worked for bell labs um, and, and then he was Michael Rabinovich is the guy, I mean, he called him Misha. You know, and mm -hmm. So he, um, you know, at one time he's like, you know, Spencer cooking is a wonderful hobby, but it would be a terrible waste for you not to go into computer science. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like how insulting is that to my, you know, like wanting to be a chef, you fucking dick. <laughs> but like, I don't know, you know? I mean, well, that's uh, how that's how he was seeing the, the world through that lens. Well, right? For sure. Right. And, and I mean, I was the first, I was so flattered because I, I was like, he hired me as a freshman, uh, as a researcher, and I, I was apparently the only one he ever hired that was an undergrad, right, at the time. And he's like, I, I have this grant, and if I do not use it, I will lose it. I'll do the accent, fuck it. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, all right, fuck it, I'll, I'll take a job. And I was so ashamed because I felt like I was underperforming. I, um, you know, I, I, I just, at the time, I, I don't know, like, I, I, I would sort of kind of, have trouble finding my fire and so i would sort of just spin my wheels and then yeah, yeah. Just kind of fuck off for a little bit and then i would get yeah, this no. drive where it would kill me at the end of the week and i would do all my work at once and get a bunch of crap done and you know i i went to him and i'm like i'm kind of ashamed of myself i think i'm not very good at this job you know like i'm, I'm sorry like if you want to get rid of me he's like what are you talking about you're doing great work you know like your your results are hot. And i'm just like ah, i could do better you know, i don't know yeah no, I mean, uh, it's 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 just something that you know. Really grateful for all of the you know good teachers and you know uh, just all the mentors throughout. All, you know, like oh, it's invaluable, to, man. When you get to, somebody like that, to keep it on the uh, the Zen the Zen twist, right? Like, there's a certain amount of karma about trying to pass that on. Then you know, it's like I knew the same, right? And so I, I really like taking on, you know, someone that's interested in learning from me, you know, it's flattering, right? Like when somebody wants to strokes your ego, for sure. <laughs> yeah, see, that's, that's not Zen. You got to get rid of that ego, man. You no, I, I completely agree. Um, but uh, it's also rewarding, right? If you're able to pass knowledge on to somebody that's grateful for it. And... That's the more important part, right? Like yeah. the, it, I, 
I tell Rose every day, like, the important part is making others feel good, helping others, being there for other people, right? Like, nobody has ever said that that's not a life well lived when somebody has spent their life doing that, right? Like, that's beautiful. Listen, I'm, I'm not a people person. I actually don't like people like, at all. <laughs> so this like, is painful for you right now. No, I mean, like, I, I can sit and bullshit forever, but <laughs> I don't. I don't necessarily like, you know, like humanity in general, you know. Like, Interesting. I, I, so George I, Carlin said that he was disillusioned to the species. Like, yeah, in, there's I, a there's a great T-shirt. Uh, my wife's threatened to get me that, that says like, "I used to like people, but people ruined it for me." But know? then people ruined it for me. <laughs> and that's how I feel. But at the same yeah. time, I I do feel that the the most value is reaching out to somebody else, be, you know, but I mean, like all of that, like that is the most important thing, right? Every day I'm trying to be like, oh man, what in the hell would Mr. Rogers do? Because I hate this person or man, this is driving me nuts, but. That's an interesting thought exercise though, to put yourself in like the, what would X do sort of, oh, I like I mean, that one. And good luck with Mr. Rogers, dude. He, you could you could have backed into his car, called him a bad name, and you know burnt down the TV studio, and he'd just be like, "It sounds like you're having a rough day, bud." You know, like, <laughs> actually, I, I met him when I was a kid. Technically, oh, yeah? I mean, I, I don't remember because my memory isn't fully formed. But this kid, yeah. Alex Rogers, in my first grade class, whose grandfather was Mr. Rogers. Dang! There and so you he go. came in for Grandparents' Day. Yeah. I mean, it, I feel like it's probably tremendous uh, pressure, but. You know, it is, it is, uh... Can you imagine having Mr. Rogers as a grandfather? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah. Probably pretty wild. I've, I've listened to a few, uh, you know, pretty in-depth pieces on him. And, you know, like the, uh, the, um, Tom Hanks movie I thought was really good about I, his life. I gotta watch that. I haven't checked it out yet. I mean, just, just inspirational, you know, in terms of, you know, everybody... You list off your like Mother Teresa's, your this, that, and you know, like in my mind, like you know, we had a dude here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you know, Pittsburgh's it's great. About, about people. So. I never really got nationalism. Like that's so talking about like liking it here. That's that's one where like I always kind of thought that was stupid growing up, and like you know, just I think it's because I moved around a lot, and you know, you, you try to have a global perspective and look at stuff as, you know, just we're all humans and, you know, more alike than different in every place. But as I've gotten older, I've started to be like, you know, I kind of like my team. I'm, I'm really enjoying Pittsburgh. I mean, I'm not like, I don't think we're better than anyone, but like, I, I'm, sure. I'm happy to be here. I, I want to be, you know, I, I like being a part of it. <laughs> it's, it's a great place to live. My, my wife, Leah, grew up in uh, upstate New York. Oh, and... I lived in Ithaca for a grip. Yeah. So, so, I mean, they have, you know, depending on how you count it, three football teams and two baseball teams. You know what I mean? Like different people in the same city root for the Mets or the Yankees or whatever, right? She came to Pittsburgh, moved to Pittsburgh. It was like, this is screwed up. All of you people, you all root for the Steelers. <laughs> and, you know, like... Unity, it's, motherfucker. It's just that lens, right? Like to yeah. her... Um, you know, the sports team was a choice because that's yeah. how she grew up, you know, with people making choices. To me, I'm I'm like, it's really weird that other cities don't all have the same color scheme like we do. Well, and so like, that's like people look at it as gold for everything, and we all go pens, pirates, but, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, and, and it's 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 kind of funny too because we kind of look at it as shitty sometimes if somebody like you're a traitor, <laughs> you know, you're side. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I mean that's that's uh that's always her argument for for the like, you know, waving your flag or whatever. And so wait. I saw a chick in a Steelers shirt in Paris, like on the oh, subway. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that's how deep Steelers go. Is uh, it's global brand are everywhere. You know. They're, yeah, there's a yep. Steelers bar in Ithaca actually. Oh, I mean there yeah. there's one in I think Hong Kong. Wow, you know? but I mean Ithaca has a sixty thousand population. <laughs> it's like it's like barely any people, but there's still a still. Yeah, well, there's only what uh, I don't know how many NFL teams with 25, you know. So that's it. Oh my gosh, chances are pretty good. <laughs> I I don't know, but you know, like 
percentages wise, you gotta hope. That's a good point. Yeah, so you just you just pick a lane and. Hey, so what play. else? I don't know. Um, I do kind of like this. Uh, I gotta learn more about Zen because you've referenced that a few times. I don't know that I fully understand it. I don't either. It's, uh, Fair enough. <laughs> it's just a. It really like um, a a big part of all of it for me was that uh, you know when 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 we all got laid off from four moms like yeah that was a tremendous you know like just life blow um, I believe that you know you you spend spend nine years you know like literally seeing the company grow from ten people up to two hundred and you. You know, you feel that, right? But yeah, what I, what I what I realized pretty quickly within a you know a couple months of being out of there, it was like, wow, that was a, a tremendous bubble in terms of um what what you valued, what you saw, what you thought was it was uh, unarguable. Okay, you know, what I mean, what what was important, right? Like, like you. Know, people get up, get caught up in all this in, in, in every work culture, right? Of like, can't take a sick day. It's just too important. It's just, there is, there are very few jobs where you can't take a sick day, you know, at least in, in our sphere, right? Like I'm not talking about, you know, frontline workers and uh, doctors, nurses, you know, people watching the show, right? Like, but I'm saying like, if, if you took a day off Spencer, guess what? Life goes on. It, yeah. It will. Well, and, and yeah. I realized that when I I got that's KA, right? I I would never take days off, and I mean I I mean I just got my COVID booster, and I'm recording a podcast, you know. But I don't feel like yeah. I'm woozy. I'm actually I like, got a bit of energy, but <laughs> um, probably the Manhattans on top of it that are probably the Manhattans, and I I mean I I did you know have some caffeine. I, I had a 200 milligram caffeine pill at work, like maybe <laughs> 3 p.m. later than I should have. <laughs> but um i uh what is it like um i got food poisoning when when i was in that mentality of like you know i i mean take like a week and a half off every year and a half you know and you just want to you know always be there you don't want to let the team down and um i got food poisoning. i was shitting and puking you know all day and i just I had to cancel all my meetings that day because, you know, there's no fucking way I was going to be able to do it. Yep. And nobody cared. <laughs> it's like, it just kept going. You know, you know, it's been tremendous um, as a, as a consultant, somebody who works outside the walls of all of my clients, right? Like, the great thing about it is at times. The, the amazing thing about it is um, people within a company work to the deadline of Friday, right? Got to get it done before the weekend. Got to get it done before the weekend. That's silly. And it was a major mind shift to me to say to a client, like they said, can you get it to me by Friday? And I said, are you going to review it on Saturday? And they went, no, I'll look at it Monday. And I said, right. So I'll get it to you Monday. Nice. And you know what I mean? But it's that mental shift of like, yeah, it really like, is it a self-imposed deadline? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if it's fascinating. something that you're say like handing over the wall or needs looked at, like if you are finishing a project for it to complete, you need the team to review it, or it needs to go to these guys or it needs stamped or whatever that also takes people. Right. So yep. it's okay to work up to Friday if that's your mental day, but you know, like treating it like, Oh man, five o'clock Friday, we need that. It's like, you know what everybody's doing at five o'clock on a Friday, leaving the office. So it's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Well, but like the, the thing with me is like, well, I, I'm actually, I'm okay. So this is interesting because I've worked pretty much every weekend for like the last six years. And so for me, weekends have always been kind of meaningless, but I've started to, so like, I mean, Thanksgiving at Formalogic was a good example of this. So I, I was, I, my parents were like, hey, you coming up for Thanksgiving this year? I'm like, yeah, I'm starting this new job. I, I, I don't think I should, you know, like, I, I don't want to spread myself too thin and I don't really care about Thanksgiving. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I said. 
Yeah. And so I started talking to coworkers and I'm like, well, you know, hey, what's going on? We're going to do it. And like, no, no, I'm out of here on Wednesday. And I'm like, well, yeah. it doesn't really make sense for me to be the only one there because, you know, I mean, I interface with people. And so yeah. maybe I'll just see the folks. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. So, I mean, like, uh, there's been tons of articles about this, um, like the younger generation coming into the workforce, you know, and uh, like Gen Z, like past millennial even, right? What did, what year did that cut off? Do you know, like roughly? Uh, the, the cut off, I mean, so what I'm talking about. Like, is, I think I'm a millennial, but I think I'm at the tail end of it. You you're probably mid to late millennial, you know, okay. like. I, I, I'm kind of so like ready. somebody under 25 now is probably a Gen Z. Totally. Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. Yep. 25, 26, like, but, but, you know, 24 year olds coming into the company or whatever, like. Got it. A lot of people, especially in, you know, Gen X or, you know, God for boomer, like whatever, like yeah. are viewing, um, you know, it, it's getting so stratified with, with the way work cultures are. It's just moving faster and faster, right? So, like, millennials are looking at Gen Z people and they're writing these articles of, like, I'm a 35-year-old, uh, you know, director at, at a company and I'm scared to death of my 26-year-old employees because I don't know how to, you know, like, how to relate the, the work ethic, the culture, the way they work, right? How the but, fuck did, how do you not relate to somebody? I mean, like, I, I'm well, sorry, maybe if these Manhattans are kicking in and I'm being a little you'd bit... You'd be surprised. Uh, yeah. It's... it's uh, it's just a difference of, you know, like, uh, like, like you were saying, like, just like you were like, oh, I'm going to skip Thanksgiving so I can work on the weekend or, you know, like That's work all day or whatever. Right. Like you just said that, right. Yep. Too so now if you had a 24 year old employee come in and say, you know, Spencer, like my head's just not in the right space today. Like Jesus I feel Christ, fine. And, like enough. my head's just not there. Like I'm going to take a day. You know that, like your mentality would be shifted off of that. You'd be like, "Wait, what?" Right? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you know? yeah, that's, uh... that's that's where you come at it from, right? Like, yep. none is right, but it's really interesting to see um, because of COVID and remote work, and uh, you know this this kind of different generation coming in. You know, like the the generation um, coming into the workforce now had cell phones when they were twelve. Oh, like, dude, there's baby apps now. I mean, I'm sure you've you are aware yeah, of those. I, yeah, right. Like like yeah. Rose uses an iPad for school like every day. Yeah. And that's not good, bad, or otherwise. It is no, it just is. is. Yeah. That's, that's where we're at. It's technology. Right. So like that as a um, society, I should say, with technology. That kind of checking into the office thing, I I think is at least in a lot of cases, you know, at least there there is a different path. It, it, you know, because of COVID and the, you know, the shifting. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think if somebody were to like, just be like, Hey, I'm not feeling good. I'm going to take a day, but if they use their other days to achieve a similar amount of work and they still kept hard things like meetings, I wouldn't be pissed at them. But I think if they just blew all their shit off, I would be kind of angry. <laughs> so. so there's where you zoom out again. Right. Like I, I always try to, when it, you know, whenever I, my, my wife takes things really like literally like she she dives in and goes but why this she's always she's a question asker you know like, that's a good thing it, it's a great thing but then i literally always take these like the opposite perspective and like zoom out a little bit and i'm like wait so you're telling me that the company has unlimited pto days unlimited sick days uh x y and z all these you know like great you know perks and benefits and because you feel like you should be working, you're projecting what they are taking their PTO day for, or like, you know what I mean? And she's like, Oh, interesting. Yeah. But you know, and it's like, wait, 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 just like zoom out. And if the company has decided as a company, as an organization, you know, that like, Hey, unlimited PTO days for any reason. Cause we want you, you know, like firing off and it doesn't matter what they did when they did it right well, i don't give a shit about what somebody did i'm talking about if they fulfilled their obligations during the other days like sure there like I, I don't give a fuck if you're you know banging whores and storing cocaine or 
taking no, a trip I, around the world or you know seeing your mother or going to I bible study that's i still think that is a uh hmm. it, it's tough like because it, you know being a consultant now you're outside of so much of that company just just running a company when you get people together there is infrastructure there are even the loosest place needs some type of policies, right? Sure. Some type of thought process. And we just don't have much of that, you know, like in the base, you know? So like, yeah. I do zoom out and go like, well, first off, the company exists ostensibly to like make money, to, to build things, right? Like to- You mean base or client in this case? No, the, it, just a company. Okay, in general, got right? it. Like why, why is the company- above. A company exists because somebody was driven by an idea and wants to make that idea. And it would be nice if they could make money. They're 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 not for profits, and there are educational. Th there's all of this, right? But yeah, but that's still the same thing that you just said. Yeah, it's still about getting your your thing out there, right? Yep. So the company that wants to do that has now formed an organization uh, and put a set of policies in place to do that. It becomes a really uh, slippery slope. Yeah, you're right because you can lose sight of your actual what's important if you if you constrain yourself too much. Right. Well, and so I was talking to somebody recently um, who was telling me about an incentive structure that they were privy to, where um, so a small organization owned by a bigger organization, and I'm trying to abstract this away because I shouldn't say who it was, but yeah. Um, Basically, the incentive structure was set up such that um, your bonus as as the president of one of these uh, small organizations um, is is determined by how much money you made more than the year before. And so, what that means is, if your division brings in ten million dollars one year, and then you bring in ten million dollars next year, you get zero bonus. If you bring in Ten and a half million dollars next year, you get no KOS. If you bring in fourteen million dollars, you get a pretty awesome bonus. But then the year after that, if you bring in twelve, you get fuck all. And right. so, the way that it actually pans out, and apparently it's like a twenty-page document, is that you want to just grow very, very slowly so you have sustainable. And so, this person um, was telling me that. Uh, the president of another company that was similarly branched with regard to the parent company. And again, I'm sorry, I'm talking weird. I'm yeah. just trying not to out this person. Makes sense. Um, was like, I got to get rid of half a million dollars. You know, anywhere I can piss this money away so I can still hit my bonus in the future. <laughs> it's like, what a horrible way to want a business. Like, I don't know. I mean, you talk about losing I sight of, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, but but at the same time, if that is the system and infrastructure in place, and you're in playing that game, that's the game you're playing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, you know, it's it's. But I mean, I I start to, and maybe this is me not being able to zoom out. I'm not, I I start to kind of hate myself when I'm in a role like that, and so, like it just you just feel kind of miserable because there's a yeah. dissonance. Like, I'm not arguing that it's uh, that it's a good thing, yeah. but I am uh, arguing that that you are playing the game, right? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, of course. It's that, it's that uh, there's there's a fair amount of that. Like, leave me alone, do your own thing, I'll do my own thing. Like libertarian, it, 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 like sure. you're working for the company. You can raise issues and bring things up, and you can try to make infrastructure change. But at the very very end of the day you are working for that company, sure. right? The only way to really meaningfully change it, the power that you have as an individual working for any company is to not work at that company, <laughs> that, right? Like, I mean, I know that that's an oversimplification and it's, it's, it's being flippant about like people that, that need a job and you don't understand, I need to make a paycheck and this is the only, like, I get that. I'm not- You don't think an individual can influence a company or you're saying it's just more powerful to leave? I am saying to understand the system that you are playing within, right? Like- Okay, okay. No one is owed anything. Of course. Um, understand the system, the game that you're playing. It doesn't have, game is, game is a little bit derogatory in terms of, it can actually be a really um, 
important mission based yeah. place, right? I'm not saying game in like a like hey, you're gaming the system kind of yeah. way. Yeah, well I used to play video games a lot and it was... understand the framework. Yeah. And then understand what you can change, what you can't change, and the the outside move of, well, I don't work there anymore. Or I shut the game off. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's a good way to look at it. Like, you know? Yeah. You can you can put in the cheat code, you can slam against the boss until you lose a hundred lives. <laughs> You can get power ups. You can do any of that. I like stuff. that. And then at the end of the day, you can also just shut the game off. You know, like. Yep. But. You know, I don't know. It's it's. Well, that's the uh, beauty of being a consultant, right? Is that, I mean, you're playing a different game every day. <laughs> so totally. It's kind of fun. And there, and and that's that's the other thing that uh, you know I'm I'm very conscious of when I worked, you know, for a company how it felt and like, you know, like the, the power you either have or don't have within that relationship and what I'm lucky enough to be doing today. Yeah. But like, you know, like it is a, a, there's a, a level of zoom out that, you know, when you look at that, you go like, Whoa, okay. It's, it's, it just feels like a pretty powerful, like understanding in terms of, I don't know, like level setting, you know? And I, I think because of that, actually, then you get, a bit more human, more kind, a little bit wiser, a little bit more forgiving, which makes you a better manager. And yeah, of you course. work in that system a little bit better, right? Like Well it's funny. I, I always always think like as a manager, like you're a therapist a lot of the time, which is interesting, sure. right? Like I mean you're also, you know, trying to think it through strategy, but like you really like is i think good managers at least the way i try to be as a manager is i just want my people to be fulfilled and, and happy and you know like i i don't want to say i would take a bullet for them but like i but but you want to go out of my way to make their lives more fulfilling and and in doing so i hope that i can increase the output of the company right but i don't want to like not, step on bodies of people and get dead. you're not managing by wanting um some like your your boss to see you managing well so that you get credit, right? That's you're, right. You're putting your team first. You're thinking about others, right? Like, um, I, I, yeah, I, I just don't think that. But there's people that do that, I think. I mean. Oh, my God. There's, yeah. well, first off, there's all kinds of people. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, I, uh, I, I always make the point, like, one of, one of my favorite, like, kind of mental thoughts whenever I get stressed or, you know, like I, I'm not invulnerable to this, especially as a consultant, you know, like working yeah. with like, my God, this director of engineering doesn't know what he's talking about or he's on my case. But the fun thing about being a consultant is you can make fun of those people. <laughs> like the second you know, <laughs> Zoom but shuts I mean, off and the door closes. The, the <laughs> most powerful thing is you realize we are all children wearing adult clothes. Sure. Paying adult mortgages. Absolutely. Driving adult cars. Yes. But we are still all children in terms of like the guy that's breathing down your neck is reacting, um, you know, like in a certain way because of the forces and the things that are enacting on him, right? Like, yeah. And so that's that a rookie changes. mistake I used to make, right? It's just parroting the anxiety of the person that is giving you that's an order. Ex exactly. It, you know, like, yeah. so that guy can still be a dick, but it's because he's he's the kid at recess that is worried that his best buddies aren't going to like him. Or, you know, like if, if you, if you pull out and you think about, yeah. you know, the, the big blowhard CEO <laughs> in his business suit, you know, and you're like, Oh, he's just like the eight year old boy that he always has been growing up. <laughs> and he's in that suit. Like, Oh, that behavior that he's doing makes so much more sense. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody sure. is afraid of being figured out that they don't, know the exact plan for life for uh, for but nobody you know, does is, is the, day -day, right? the hilarity like, of that right i mean like nobody knows the exact <laughs> you can't plan for life <laughs> life is yeah. too unpredictable but everybody acts like you know getting this done or that project or this deadline is somehow feeding into this larger plan of life uh, that's that's ridiculous you know well, I, mean? I agree like, with that, right? But I mean, I can still be good at executing projects and meeting deadlines. <laughs> I, I am only trying to be an advocate for 
uh, the the counter side to that argument, right? Like, yeah, there is. I'm glad you are. This is a fun conversation. There is so much, um, so many articles so celebrated about the drive, the work hard, how to optimize, how to be better, how to do this, how to work within this, how to figure this out, how to, how to, how to, how. To, there's a Click whole bait. another like the the amount is so out of out of whack in terms of what people think well, about most of it's total terms. horseshit of course i mean yeah i i mean yeah don't get me wrong i spend every day you know like that i'm i'm working wanting to figure this out and make this better and you know like all this stuff i'm not trying to be some like unplugged uh no, 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 I'm looking at like some pretty cool stuff behind you that clearly yeah. a lot of thought went into. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a driven guy. I want to, yeah. you know, like I want to do good, be successful, and all that. It's just I've I've tried to like look at that scale a little bit. Again. Yeah, well, I mean, the kids piece is actually quite hilarious to me because I, I was at a trade event a few weeks ago and I, I saw a. Um, there was a man that must have been in his 70s or 80s, probably his 80s, um, and quite a bit to drink. It was like the 7 p.m., like people are having, you know, a few cocktails. And yeah. I remember, ah, I just to tell the whole story. So I, I walked into this place, and I, I'm just, I'm trying to hit the networking because, I mean, that's sort of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um who was that economist that came up with the 80 principle? Uh, yeah. Search the P, yeah. you know, like, yeah, you know, like, um, so I'm just, I'm just trying to like economize because I've got a lot, of, you know, I'm trying to get stuff done, but also yeah, you, know, you don't have to explain do effective it, sales. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so I, I showed up, yeah. I went to this place and um, I got there and I just remember like, you just see people that have had a few too many drinks and like one of them is like pouring candle wax into wine glasses and i'm just like this guy's an asshole <laughs> like you're somebody else has to clean that you know like what are you what are you doing like you're, you're just creating more work for the next person superfluously you know like why, why would you do that yeah, <laughs> so... that's an eight-year-old boy yeah exactly <laughs> i mean it is um yeah it, it's it's just really interesting you can see the people uh who you know, want to walk up to you and tell you, you know, like all about themselves or, you know, what they've done or anything. And you can tell like, oh, wow, like they don't, they obviously don't have that outlet, right? Like this guy is just bursting to tell me how hard he's worked or what he's doing or what, you know, like what his idea is or whatever it is. You, you meet it a lot with entrepreneurs, actually. Like sure. they are so self-obsessed with their idea and usually it's a it's a get rich idea i probably worked for like a hundred startups at this point <laughs> i don't know what you're you talking it, about right and you're like wow like yeah. you know I, like you're just driven by that because it, like you have not shifted that mentality from you know it's cool right you know well, but I, I think some of the you know the what do you want to call it? Like the places that invest in these companies kind of egg that on, right? Like, I don't know if that's necessary for like the seed level entrepreneurship to be, I don't think it is. Oh, I think it's, it's a misconception. It's totally a misconception. And, and it's, it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's that whole founder's myth of, you know, Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos and like, te, you know. But like, do you really think your, your stupid niche is the most important thing in the world? <laughs> like, you know, like, I don't know. I mean, I know I enjoy building robots. I don't think it's the most important thing in the world. <laughs> like, well, you know I mean, the, the crazy thing, like, if you want to really, like, like, either scare a client away or, uh, or you know, like, have real talk, um, I, I'll be honest, I, especially right now in, in the way global supply chains are, the way manufacturing is, the way supply, the you know, the way we've been living on this planet. Yeah. I'm convinced. I mean, I make product for a living. I make things that are sold. 
And I'm convinced yeah. that physical product does not make money. You know, interesting. I don't care how many iPhones Apple makes and sells, right? Yeah. Like, I've got one too. I just threw it in the ground when it rang during. Oh, I'm, I'm, podcast. I'm a Google guy myself. Oh, and so I, I'll tell you why I don't like Google. If we want to talk about that, <laughs> but my my whole point in in that is that we have not been paying the real cost for materials, uh, labor supply chain shipping you know like everybody in the world wants their ford f-150 and their you know charbroil grill and their yeti cooler and their you know right like interesting we are not paying the real cost of of things you know that as a person that makes shit i mean it, it's one thing that you can get oh, the, oh oh i see so you're talking about the sticker price versus the cost of manufacture I'm I'm talking about the even deeper intrinsic cost of just like, like making a thing, and, and we face it with spruce, right? Like, you've got my passion back there. You've got products that like I think are great products. Yeah. I think they're valuable. We do our best to like cost engineer them for the most for the least. We do all of this stuff. Sure. Right? How many damn dog beds do you think you need to sell to make a thousand dollars? to make a hundred thousand dollars to make a million dollars and then when you zoom that out and you go yeah sure you can make you know a hundred million dollars off of this if you spend 80 million on marketing 20 million on retail outlets 30 right like, 100 million revenue or profit uh, my my only point here is casper right if you read the uh it's like the latest stuff with casper the mattress company Actually, I'm not. I mean, I know the company because I've heard of them from their commercials, but I don't actually forget about them. Commercials everywhere, right? Yeah. They they revolutionized the mattress industry. They changed things. They shook it up. Their valuation, huge IPO uh, stock actually, offers. For a all mattress these company? What's that? I feel like I feel like the the dumbest person right now, but like I, I don't know any of this because I'm I'm kind of living under a rock here. I'm I'm just a super nerd about these kind of no, things. I'm interested. I am too, and that's why I'm, so, I'm fucking fascinated right now. So the the point is they are in huge financial troubles right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> bankruptcies, uh you know, like selling off the company to sounds like four like, moms. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah. it. And it's because they're, they they were selling a story and, you know, like we'll eventually become profitable. But right now we need to be all about marketing. We need to be about presence. The, the, the company that invented online mattress sales started opening brick and mortar retail stores. Like that's a warning sign, right? That yeah. Like, schizophrenia. Hey, your business model that you told all the investors and everybody in the world that you had like was the way actually doesn't seem to be the way. And in fact, it's the opposite of the way. They've lost money every year to the tune of millions of dollars. And so they right? just go back. Well, Uber, I guess, is another good example of that with the advanced technology group and the fact that that's, prices are now going up because they can't get people to that's a finance the pyramid scheme example. anymore. Yep. Everybody that would start trumpeting Uber, you know, like four years ago, I would just go, all right, cool. Like, I, I hope that would be me. Pets.com. <laughs> right? Where are they like, now? But that's the thing is like there is, I'm convinced that nothing hardware wise makes money. <laughs> like, it, you know, people, like Apple the, with the, the icon, large, you don't think they're earning the larger, money? The larger point of that is everything like made. I, I b believe is made because of somebody's desire to make it and bring it into the world. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. I can, I so can buy that. If you zoom out, I understand that Apple is a profitable company. I'm not arguing that they don't make money. Right. But I'm arguing that it is this, this wheel within a wheel of, uh, you know, just this ramped up kind of like you need to sell the next, the next, the next, right. Like, but the way Apple started and the reason it was a company was Steve and Steve wanted to build a computer. They just wanted to make like- I think Steve did, but I'm not convinced the other Steve did. Sure, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like they just had to make this thing. Was for sure, job. yeah, jobs, I'm, I'm not so sure, but- you, you talk to an entrepreneur and they say, 
I just, this idea I think is awesome. And you're like, okay, but let's do some math. And you do some math and you realize like everybody in the world will have to buy five of these. <laughs> right? And then you're like, so. Well, that, that's how you figure out the size of the market that you show the VCs in the pitch. <laughs> yeah. and that's exactly yeah. the mentality that i think is uh is way too celebrated and like it it's a bath of cold water for a lot of my entrepreneurial clients like if if you don't have investment or you don't have like a a real solid thing we still help yeah but we help in very realistic financially responsible uh ways right like we provide as much support as we can, but we are also a, a fair amount of that. Like, let's do the math here. Let's talk about this. Let's really That's figure awesome. out. Like, I'm totally fine if you want to make widgets because you just want to make that widget and you need to make that widget. And you, if you die and you haven't made that widget, you're not happy. Fine, totally good reason to do it. But don't necessarily tell me that this widget is going to, you know be a profit revolution the way is the way yeah exactly it's going to be the airbnb of google that's all you know what yeah. i mean like it, it i just think that there's way too much celebration of all of this uh culture you know what i mean but, yeah no it's a bit of a circle jerk for sure um yeah yeah no i mean it, i kind of felt like sisyphus at times when i was really serving the uh early stage startup community in particular, but I mean, the startup community in general, and you know, it's, it's industry, it's just different percentages, you know, because you would cultivate these relationships and, and really get to know a client and hopefully help them out, you know, and they come to trust you and rely on you and yeah, it, it, definitely fulfilling, right? It feels good to be in that position. I too like to help, you know, so. Yep. It's pretty nice. And then they would run out of money and go out of business. You'd be like, oh, fuck. You know? <laughs> like, okay, fair enough. The, the percentages are all there. It, you know, nothing has changed since people have started making businesses back in caveman days, right? Like, <laughs> the, the, the percentage of the guys who are making the wheel, like, there's going to be a guy who makes the wheel that, like, really takes off, and there's going to be Larry that was making the square wheels. Like, <laughs> you know, like, but... Funny. you know like so the data is there i just think that unfortunately and and to, to zoom out that that again that larger scale out thing right like the reason design firms work on projects that they know might not have you know like teeth or you know like whatever yeah because inside they want to work on cool projects and i they I love it I love it as, as an engineer. I, but that's also misguided because that's yeah. us or you or them yeah. now enabling this. Oh, system. I see what you're saying. Right. And so then you don't think if you, if you inform your client and you say, I would recommend maybe doing this, and then they'd be like, but I really want to do that. You're like, all right, happy to do it. Oh, totally. You don't think that's responsible. Oh, it's, it's totally responsible. Okay. I, I'm not, um, like I said, we, we work with clients where like we're rolling our eyes, you know, at the end of the meeting, <laughs> like, I can't believe this, but you also are a hundred percent transparent. Yeah. You provide data and then you try to walk through walls for them and do everything you can. Yeah. Right? Okay. Same but page. I am under no illusion that, uh, that the reason I want to help is, you know, it is, is a, is a, uh, it's that same, it goes back to that same, like kind of child mentality. Right? For sure. No, you're, you're, you're essentially masturbating. You know, like I'm, <laughs> I'm the six year old boy that wants to like, wants to like, ta-da, I, I helped you. I did it. Aren't I good? Right? Yeah. Like, well, that's the ego thing you were talking about that you're trying right. to fight. Yeah. I see. That's exactly it right is is all of that ego and yeah it is out, you, you, do you think it's it. ego though because like maybe maybe this is because i mean i i 
I don't know. I like to think I've, I've worked to stifle my ego, but I guess it's never really gone completely, right? And so, yeah, I mean, you try to you try to like keep it in check and 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 think about it and be like, you know, am I acting in an egotistical shit? I mean, like another thing I've embraced, you know, over the past few years is like stoicism. So, I used to go out and treat myself a lot more than I do. I talk about like cooking my own meals a lot more these days and just trying to you know, just kind of tough it out. And that's, there's something to be said, like, I, I kind of, somebody told me, like, the only real freedom is is in self-discipline. And so, like, I, I kind of dig that. Um, and, I mean, I, I also like to think, and, and maybe this is just me parodying what I think sounds smart, but I like to think that I'm trying to sort of distance myself from ego. But, um I don't know. I'm probably still a victim of it. I'm probably still guilty of it, you know, as, as like being, being yeah, an I ego, mean, egotist. I, I think that larger point of it is we're all here on the planet, right? Life is, Buddhism teaches that life is suffering. You, the Dalai Lama is suffering. The meth head is suffering, right? Yeah. Same, same, right? Like if you're alive and you're on this earth, you are part of this cycle, right? Like, it, and like, it's counterintuitive when you first like start reading that. You're like, wait, wait, I thought we were trying to achieve enlightenment here. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. Buddhism, like, life is fucked. Life is suffering. So it's unachievable. <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah. It, it is unachievable, right? Yeah. And so then when you dial it back, you say to yourself, then what's it all for? That's when you start looking around and you say, eh. To, to make that person smile, to to be there for that person. Okay, to, but that feels good too, right? Totally. You get a little like, wins. <laughs> that that's all there is in life. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I mean that's that really is like my uh that's that's that is one of my core beliefs. That's all there is in life, right? Like yeah. I get caught up in it. I want to deliver everything. But that's like, a little win too. I mean I so what I think you're saying and, and correct me if I'm wrong here is that if it's ego or if it isn't ego, is reliant on the motivation behind the win. If you're doing it to show off, then it's ego. If you're doing it because you enjoyed making someone else's day better, then it's I don't want to say pure, but it, yeah, it's a different well, thing. That that's the real the real point of it is there is no pure, right? Yeah. Like there, there's per, there, there's percentages, right? Like for sure, it's still like it, it strikes me as like you said, like different shades of the same. I mean, you're at the yeah. end of the day. I mean, you're you're just trying to be as happy as you can be and that's it it's yep. good to have that skinner box go off and there's there's ways to do it that feel maybe not as sustainable as other ways and so for me like i know if i can work hard and, and do a good job and and you know earn some money and but also you know people are happy and that makes me happy because i have a lot of empathy and you know that's all very nice you know i mean like that seems more sustainable than you know if i'm like I, i've never oh, been yeah. to gambling but for instance like if i were to go and, and like play slots or something which probably would have a well, similar or, or if you spend all your time uh, you know just trying to sell the guy the thing that he didn't need because that was more money yeah well and, and you meet sales people like that that are fucking sure. douchebags and it, it, you know I, and yeah. Yeah. Like they brag about how much they spend in their expense accounts, you know, which is fucking over. You're like, you're supposed to be serving this cut. Like, why would you piss away their money and brag I, about it? You know, or I like think, I could sell Eskimos refrigerator. Like well, maybe don't sell someone a thing. They don't actually, you know, that doesn't make their life better. You stupid we're, asshole. We're all just in the same pot though. We're all, we're all kids on the playground, you know? And yeah. That's, but that's, my addiction, like your, your addiction probably too is, you know, just like, you still want to feel good, <laughs> oh, yeah. even if it's making somebody else smile that makes you feel good. I mean, that's that's a different shade of the same thing, right? It, it absolutely is, and and I'm not even saying that that I live my life this way. I'm yeah. just saying that it is the the filter that I try to look at everything through. You know, like like I said, I'm not a people person. I you know I. I don't know. I, I don't like people, but I try to look at this filter, and what I find is. When I look through that filter at almost every decision, interaction, whatever it is, it really helps. It helps you zero in and focus on what's most important. And and that can be 
that can be a tooling level decision on like, you know, like whatever this, this edge is, like if you're actually zooming out and not so just like, we gotta make this thing, <laughs> you know, like just filter it for just a second, listen to a little tiny, that little Zen voice. And it literally gives you just a tiny second of like, well, could we, could we actually reverse that and do it the other way? And they go, Oh, that could work. And you go, cool. <laughs> But that's a different mindset that, you know, it, it, it's just a little... It's very you know, easy to get tunnel vision, right? And I yeah. think that's what you're saying. And, and But to, to for one second, think about why are, why are we doing this? Yeah. It, yeah, it's just a filter to look through. And, you know, I think so many... And this is getting way too deep, but... No, I, I like this. I mean, if you're... People cool run it. through life and life happens to them and they they react to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. Well, I think it's also easy to get overwhelmed. Like if people just dump shit on your desk or- People can't do it. Take you in the mean, balls we're, we're constantly. Not, I mean, then you're reacting. Not, you never get to be proactive. Yeah, we it, it's, it's, you know, scientifically proven that we're only but so good at multitasking and keeping up at running nonstop. Says so the know, guy like, that can do a book, a TV show. <laughs> you know but i mean you you, you uh you need those filters that that's all is is just to give you you know if, if you just sit up and uh look out the window and take a deep breath that's usually all it takes <laughs> that's probably my last karmic statement you know my last no i dig it i mean like and I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know anything about Buddhism these days, but when I was a kid, I mean, I, it was the only religion they, so I, I went to like a expensive private school and it, so we'd learn about different religions <laughs> and, 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 you know, they'd give us like over, and, and, but I think the Dalai Lama actually came to my school when I was a kid. Like I, I was so that's a, that's fucking fortunate that. to have had that experience. <laughs> yeah. And like, um, but like, I don't know. I remember like thinking Buddhism is the one that actually makes sense to me. I'm still not religious. I mean, I, I not, not really, I mean, probably shouldn't say it, it's a little bit political, but whatever. I mean, I'm not religious. And so, it, but that was it, the one that's like, it didn't feel like a religion. It felt like more of just a, a philosophy, I guess. You that's know? why they call it practicing Buddhism. Right. And like, you know, like anytime I've gotten a little bit deeper into it, I've realized like, Oh shit. Like, I can't even really like become Buddhist, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, yeah. right. Like, Wait, I'm trying to figure this out. So you can't become Buddhist because it's because it's kind of antithetical to the entire, uh, Oh, to say you're the thing. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Right. Like it, yeah. it's, it is, it is very much like, Oh, cool. You're Buddhist. Neat. You know, yeah, you're like, fucking douche. You're missing the what, point. What, yeah. What, what day was that that you became Buddhist? You know, like, <laughs> you're really missing the point. Like if that's how you're looking at that's it. That's funny. Right? Well, let me, let me, let me tell you about Buddhism, like knocking on doors. Like, have you heard about Buddhism? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Have you heard the good news? Right. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, so, so like once you realize that like, like, like you said, like, if that was the one that felt like it made sense to you, like, once you realize that you can't become that, you go like, oh, wait, shit. The whole point is the journey, the process, the practice, the getting. Well, better. and I believe that, like, that's, I don't know that I consider myself to be any religion, but like I said, I mean, ethnically Jewish, I guess, because that's what my family was, but like, I, I, um, I don't know, like. I definitely believe a lot of that stuff like the life life is definitely about the journey right and so i mean about is kind of silly because it's not really about anything but like i choose to make it about the journey for me because that for me is more fulfilling than trying to get to a goal you can never achieve because we're all going to die and so nobody, you know, yeah, yeah nobody and you're never going to be the the best in the world or anything and even if you were someone else is going to become better at it than you and so right yeah and like even the chase for that is it, it just whether it's right wrong or indifferent it's just something that's been tremendously like freeing to my business to me to you know what i mean like 
to look at things through that filter, right? Yeah. I'm not saying that I don't respect the hell out of Elon Musk or, you know, like President Obama or like people that drive and become like the top of the thing. Yeah. Uh, the first guy in space. That's fucking cool. I don't care what. And like, Was that Alan Shepard? What, however you want to do it, right? <laughs> guy, my point is, I, might like, be wrong. I respect the shit out of that guy that is doing that. I get it. It's cool. Um, it's just also that's not the only story. It, it can't be, right? There are yeah. billions of us on this planet, and, and we're talking about the one guy. Like, yeah. So that's that's the fluke. And you understand that the rest of humanity is is this, you know, is you know. Yeah, but even that person probably is having a similar experience to you and I, right? I mean, like, totally. we're, all, we're all just people, like apes, Turns children, out. whatever you want to call it. I mean, here's the secret thing: Elon Musk is a big kid wearing grown-up clothes yeah. on the playground. Like I said, like he is working with his entire. Uh, Everything that has gone into him as a human being up until this point, right? I, I, I think he's, you know, like I think he's great. Yeah. You know, so none of this is, um, is is bad mouthing. Yeah. But he is working with all of his experiences, his biochemistry, who he is, his history, his knowledge, all of it, and he's doing the best he can every day, and that's all we all can do, right? Of like, course. He's got no secret manual he wasn't dropped off by aliens like everybody right yeah. president trump was doing the best he could sure you know like this astronaut is doing the best he could this meth head is doing the best he could everybody's yeah. working with whatever they got <laughs> you, know? like, you think everybody is doing the best they can though like i feel like but that that's that i see at that point in time under the circumstances they're in okay even you saying it in that phrasing is assigning a value to achieving the best they could. So you're saying the metric shouldn't exist because humanity is doesn't really work that way. All right, I mean, let's help by that. I'm thinking to be a realist about it, you know, like I, now listen, I'm the first guy that wants an A plus on my report card. <laughs> you know? But you you do start seeing the very well. Um, I, I I mean I was the valedictorian of like a five hundred person class in high school. I mean I, I remember doing quite well academically as well. And for you know you fucking work your ass off to like the difference between an A plus and an A is like a factor of ten, and the difference in work right like the amount of fucking effort you have to put in, and the difference between an A and a B is also like an order of magnitude right. And so. Right. Like you're fucking working your little kid balls off in order to do that. And yeah. but it is, I was also philosophical about it. So like for me, when I was doing that, like and, and my dad's like this too, like, you know, he's like, none of it means anything, you know? Like it's it's all pageantry, right? I mean, and so and like, you know, you talking about like the SATs, like you, you memorize these facts that are never gonna be relevant to your life or your career or anything, but you want that A plus. And so <laughs> <laughs> you put in the effort, nope. you know, and like, um, I don't know, like, like, I mean, my dad's a doc, like he paid the medical board, like thousands, of, he's like, it's a big fucking scam. I could have paid him thousands of dollars a year just to be board certified. And it's a private company, you know, that it, like, like SAT is administrated by the college board, which is also a private company, you know, and it's, the, the like, NFL is a fucking private company. Like it's all. Just somebody no, decided their no, thing was going to be big and they did a good job marketing it. And now we look at it as if it's authority. And that's, that goes to my entire point is that it yeah. is, it is all the system you're working within. And as long as you view it as the system, it doesn't matter if it's NPR or Fox News or CNN, they all want clicks. They are a yep. business, right? Like everybody is a business. Yep. And as long as you understand that and zoom out, then all those political arguments start to seem silly. You're like, wow, okay, so, you know, like, I may agree with this or this or this, but you do understand that they're all a media business, yeah. right, or an SAP. Well, company. and I try to look at it that way too, right, is I feel like it makes it easier to get along with people when you when you just look at it as, all right, that makes sense. I can see why you would do that, you know. And that's that's my point of business in general or working with clients is like, 
when you zoom out that lens a little bit, it frees up that anxiety, that pressure, that, you know, like that, like, this is the system, I got to do it, you know, like, all of a sudden, it really, like, let, lets you free, so. That's a, that's a healthy outlook, I think. <laughs> yeah. Great. I mean, well, the other one that's fun, been, man. it's been really good. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to talk you off here, but that's yeah. Right. Anything you want to plug in particular? Uh, no, I mean, call it? check out base design. We're always working on, uh, some fun stuff. Like I said, uh, the website is medium up to date, but you know, we don't show a lot of work, whether it's because it's, uh, like kind of client confidential still being worked on or whether it's like, eh, talk with us, come in and let's talk about your project, you know? So yeah, it makes sense to me. And I, I mean, you know, running SKA for six years, I, I feel like I, I know that as well. Awesome. Yeah. Base design, a uh, big fan of your work that I've seen. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is because I want to violate any kind of secrecy here, <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude, Eli, fun having you on. Thank you for coming in and uh, good hanging out with you, bud. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> man. I appreciate it. My pleasure. If you stuck around this long and you like what you've heard, please give us a like and smash that subscribe button or smash that like button and give us a subscribe. We're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show. If you know anyone good send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below thanks again for listening and please come to the next one